how they perform and what are the important ceremony or pujas, if not recitals, or how to perform these our religious services on such occasions. The problems with us is this. Although the Buddha has preached the Dhamma, he has never mentioned anything how to organize these religious ceremonies. To many of them, these are under rites and rituals that we perform as religious services. Because there are many others, especially in the West, who are not interested in those practices. But that is not a good attitude. Please remember that we should not follow them blindly, that Westerners are not interested, just because we also follow them. Because our culture, our tradition, our way of life, our mentality are entirely different. We need such practices. And we heard on many occasions in the West what they say. We remember our religion only three times during our lifetime. Birth, marriage and death. Now these are the three occasions that definitely we go to the churches. Otherwise we never think about religion. But it is not a good attitude. When you consider how other religions like Hindus, Muslims, Christians and some others, and how they have organized their religious activities by considering very carefully the human mentality. I can use uh, a simple example. Buddhists have neglected religious service or blessing when they are going to get married. But this has become uh, actually a big blow to topple Buddhism. So if we do not bring forward our religion, when we are going to get married, because that is the time that they are going to take the responsibilities of their life, whole life. And at that time, we had to create some sort of confidence in their mind, responsibility, and make them to understand. One day when I was talking to Archbishop here, he told me a new uh, couple, young boy and girl, before their marriage, they invite this couple to church at least for three months before their marriage, once a week, and give necessary instructions and guidance and advice. The way how we have organized this religion, especially in Buddhist countries, by disregarding the religious service or the blessing service on this particular occasion. So people won't get real feeling that religion is needed in our 
day-to-day life. So they have kept Buddhism only to perform funeral rites. Now they created a wrong impression that Buddhism is a dead man's religion, not for living people. They remember their religion when death takes place. And that is also not religion, actually speaking. Because of the fear, they need religious protection. And then invite the monks to perform some sort of religious services. The main idea is for their own protection. Some others may think by performing certain religious services they also can support the health, the departed persons to get rid of their sufferings. Now this is not a very healthy attitude. So from their childhood we had to train our people why religion is needed, why religious services and blessings are needed, not only to go to heaven, not only to escape from hell, but in our day-to-day life there will be so many problems and difficulties and miseries and calamities, misunderstanding, conflicts. So if we can give this confidence. They know how to face many of their problems or they know how to overcome some of their problems. That is why the confidence that we have created in their mind can help throughout their life. So when you are young, it is very important for you to learn your own religion. Not only thinking of heaven or your own final salvation or nirvana, but there are many things that you had to adapt or adjust your way of life by considering the religious guidance. The Buddha has given advice. But he never advised us how to organize these activities. So it is up to us to organize from time to time, from country to country, according to their culture, way of life. Because the same method, same customs we cannot uh, introduce in every uh, country. Their way of life is different. Then, when we invite Chinese Buddhist, Thai Buddhist, Burmese Buddhist, Indian Buddhist, Sri Lankan Buddhist, and Tibetan Buddhist, Japanese Buddhist, Koreans and Mongolians, and all these Buddhists get together. So if we ask them to perform one particular religious service, you can see how they perform. Oh, there you can see the difference. The biggest problem is the language problem. So when we meet different Buddhists from different countries and we talk just like cock and bull, you know, cannot exchange our ideas, cannot express our views, and cannot cooperate and harmonize how to organize all these common religious practices. Every group tried to prove that their method is higher and correct, but they do not know all are wrong, <laughs> because organized by them, they should not 
try to justify that our method is the correct method. Uh, that is why you are asking this question, how to perform and what are the names. Again, in a country like Malaysia, you are facing a very big problem. Because this is not a Buddhist country. And all those Buddhists who live in this country practice this religion blindly, not knowing even the basic teachings of the Buddha. They always listen to the public, but not to the Buddha. Because they come and tell us, people say like this, but there is nobody to say the Buddha says like this. So it clearly shows their knowledge about the Dhamma or the teachings very, very poor. If they have learned the Dhamma, there is nothing for them to say, people say like this. When people say something and you can understand whether they are right or wrong, so don't follow what people come and tell you, ask you to do this and believe this or that. That is why your knowledge is important. So here you attend or you listen to various religious teachers and masters who come and explain. Buddhism. And monks come from different countries, from Sri Lanka, Thailand, Burma, Japan, and Hong Kong, Taiwan, Tibet, Mongolia, and India. And you listen to all of them. After listening to all those people, what will happen? You create more confusion. And now you do not know which method is correct. Because they have their own different method and belief and tradition. So when we talk about the Buddha's teaching, we should not cling or we should not develop attachment towards those traditional belief and practices without analyzing, without understanding, thinking that, just thinking that they are more powerful than the others. Uh, this is the problem. In the name of this religion, different Buddhist group, in the name of Buddhism, they preached and introduced entirely different views and ideas and beliefs which we cannot find in the Buddha's teaching. That is why it is necessary for you to learn the Buddha's teaching first, then you can understand. So your knowledge, your understanding is very vague. You are ready to listen to anybody who come and talk about Buddhism. Now let us find out the first item, full moon and new moon. I think I have explained the significance or the religious significance of full moon and new moon. And I have written in my book, What Buddhist Belief, few pages. And then you can understand. Why do we celebrate? And why do we observe certain religious precepts or principles? And why do we pay more attention toward religion on full moon and new moon days? So what is the religious significance? Not only Buddhism. Muslims or 
also depend on moon to organize their fasting and breaking their fast. Depend on moon. Uh, there is something related to religion. Then Hindus in India observe certain precepts or vow for their fasting by watching the moon. On full moon day, they take full diet. Then from next day onwards, they go on reducing, 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 reducing the amount of food up to next new moon day. New moon day you cannot see the moon, isn't it? Uh, that day no food, no more food at all, fasting. Again next day onwards, I start taking little by little. Then they increase the amount of food every day by following the moon. And next full moon day, they take full diet. Uh, this is called Chandrayana Vrata, Chandra means moon. Many people practice this. It's very good for health also. Those who want to reduce their weight also very good. You try that see. And full moon will be, I think, another two days' time, isn't it? Uh, that day you can take full diet. Full diet you can take. But not at night time. Don't take full diet at night time. Very bad for health. <coughs> then, Buddhist, we know only one thing. The Buddha was born on a full moon day. He renounced his worldly life on a full moon day. He attained his enlightenment on a full moon day. Then he delivered the first sermon on a full moon day. And there are many other important occasions. Then, in the end, he attained Paranibbana or passing away, also took place on the full moon day. And this is our religious significance. We know only this much. But we do not know why all these occurrences have taken place on full moon day. Uh, that we do not know. Another thing is spent most of his time under the trees, in the jungle. Although there were so many monasteries and the temples of earth, he preferred open air. As some sort of relationship between the plant life and the Buddha and the yogis and the meditators and religious people, they prefer that way of life. And we also believe that we can influence the plant life. Scientifically they have proven already, yes, we can influence the plant life. But we know only that much. But we do not know how the plant life can influence us. Are still not discovered. So the Buddha was sitting under the Bodhi tree. So when he was meditating under that tree, on full moon day he gained his enlightenment. Otherwise, there is no reason for him to renounce and go away from his palace. He knew while staying in his palace he won't gain his enlightenment. So 
was a full moon day and new moon day. Today scientists have discovered how these two planets influence our brain, our minds and physical body. Many changes take place. Especially on full moon day, brain cells, fluid in the brain, is stirred. That is why some people talk rubbish on full moon day. Uh, for that, for that sicknesses, uh, for lunatic problem. A lunar means moon. How moon can influence the human brain? It is not the mind. Moon cannot influence the mind. It can influence the brain. And then the changes take place in the mind because of this. Then some people say on full moon day, young people naturally experience some sort of romantic idea. I do not know whether it is true or not, because I am not young, I cannot say. <laughs> I have learned this recently. When I was young, I did not study this. Therefore, I cannot prove whether it is true or not. Romantic ideas. Then, those who have developed their mind and that developed mind can gain more realizations and understanding and wisdom if they have diverted their mind towards that particular line. Now the Buddha was practicing and developing and cultivating his mind for six years, which in that lifetime, earlier also he has done this. Uh, that is how on full moon day he could manage to reach the final goal. He got his wisdom on full moon. Another reason, in Buddhist countries, full moon and new moon days are declared as public holidays. But today only in few countries. Why it is ne necessary? Because Many changes take place in the elements of our body on that day. To avoid these problems, to avoid certain sicknesses, people have decided to concentrate more on religion without creating excitement, without harboring jealousy, anger or evil thought in the mind, without worrying about their business or work or family problems, try to keep away from all these problems at least for 24 hours and have free mind. Relax. Then you can maintain healthy mind and healthy body. Not only that, this is a good opportunity for you to improve your knowledge and understanding and practice. When you preserve At least one particular day. Today we concentrate only 
on religion, either reading or listening or meditating, if not attending to various religious activities which never create excitement or fear in our mind. So the way how we organize certain religious activities on full moon day is not advisable, not reasonable, because we create more excitement. So that day is important for us to calm our mind, but not to disturb the mind. So the meditation or reading some religious book is not diverting our mind towards certain things which do not disturb the mind. Now this is the way how they have used their way of life and how they organize religious activities on full moon and new moon day. One reason for our protection. Another reason to maintain healthy life. Another reason to cultivate our mind, to maintain some sort of purity in our mind, at least for 24 hours. So by considering all these things, the Buddha has introduced the monks and the devotees to remember their religious principles. Repeat. And the usual customs among the monks on full moon and new moon days, they meet and recite their precept, remind. And the lay devotees observe eight precepts. Then they can remember these are the precepts. These are the principles for us to uphold, to lead the religious life. By doing so, they can cultivate their mind, their way of life. But today, we organize more celebrations to influence people. Festivals, religious festivals, where we can find more funds just to please others. And those who assemble to attend such religious functions are not religious-minded people. They just come and see the fun. Like on Vesak day, people assemble in various temples and places of worship all over the world, not only here, to see the decorations, lion dance, dragon dance, festival. But no religious mind no peace in their mind. But we organize all these things to influence people, to bring more and more people. Anyway, if we ask on one without day, from morning up to next day, morning, here in this temple, only meditation, no other activities, you can see how many people come and attend. And Vesak day night, I think not less than 40 to 50,000 people. But if we announce this, the next full moon day, Vesak full moon day, only meditation. I don't think even 100 people will turn up. Now this is the nature of human mind. So we try to provide certain things which people are needed to satisfy them. Not only that, and next day, when we open the charity box, and the collection is very good, uh, now, you see, uh, Buddhism is uh, 
progressing very well. By considering in terms of dollars, in every temple, in every church, every place of worship, first item is the charity box. But how many people try to find out that on that particular day, a holy day, how many people have promised not to disturb others, not to harbor jealousy or hatred towards others, and how to practice patience and tolerance, and how to extend their kindness towards others. They never think about all this. In terms of dollars, number of people who assemble. Uh, this is the way how we measure the religious development today in every religion, not only in Buddhism. In worldly way, the full moon and new moon day for us to think of the spiritual development, peace of mind, So we organize all these things just to influence others, but originally the Buddha has introduced advice us to practice it, to maintain our good health, to maintain peace and harmony and peace of mind and also for the spiritual development. Because that particular day, if we neglects our religious way of life and devotes our time more on worldly things, we get into trouble. We invite more problems and more difficulties. But we come to know this later, not immediately. So those who want to know more detail about the full moon and new moon day, religious practices and belief and significance can read that book, What Buddhists Believe. It gives a lot of many examples. Next one, joyful occasions like marriage, birth, and housewarming. Usually we conduct only blessing service to create some confidence in their mind that they, they get the blessing for their protection, for their peaceful life and prosperity only this much. But that occasion, marriage, is more important for this young couple to understand, to determine, to strengthen their mind, to carry on their married life. Although they had to come across, had to face so many problems and difficulties and misunderstanding. These things are natural. There is no married life without misunderstanding, conflicts, arguments, and uh, sometimes jealousy and misery. Almost every day in certain houses. There is no peace in their mind because of their marriage. Uh, that means they have not learned how to handle their married life. That is why they had to face so many problems. If they have learned these things earlier, then they know how to adapt themselves, how to tolerate certain things, not everything, certain things, and how to avoid 
certain problems and how to face certain problems because they are natural. Certain problems are natural. Therefore, they must have courage to face them without grumbling or accusing. So, simply receiving some blessing, they won't get everything. They have to learn, they have to think, they have to determine. In spite of various problems and misunderstandings, we have to carry on this life. This is not temporary. A wife who was very angry with her husband used to scold that poor man, Josiah Socrates. You know that. This lady started scolding him. You are stupid, you are idiot, you are useless, you have no brain. Then that man told her, actually I knew that. If I am not stupid, do you think <laughs> that I marry you? <laughs> so it clearly shows I am stupid. Settle the problem. And she also stops calling. Uh, this is the technique. So Socrates, uh, his wife was a very hot tempered lady. Every day he gets called in from her wife. But he had wonderful patience and tolerance. When wife started to scold him, he listened very carefully, attentively. When she stopped her scolding, uh, then he said, oh, today I noticed your way of talking uh, without making any grammatical mistake, <laughs> emphasizing certain words and terms, and uh, the way how you expressed your views very clear. I think you are improving. <laughs> <laughs> See how wise people face problems. You think you cannot adopt this? You can, because you never learn. So one day, one of his friends visited him. That day he was not very jovial, just keeping quiet. Then he asked, why you are very quiet today? He said, yes, I am not very happy today. Why? Because my wife did not score me today. <laughs> Every time when she called me, I take the opportunity to practice patience. Today I miss that. A monk who went to Tibet from India to introduce Buddhism, his name was Deepankara Sri Jnana. And he has taken a cook also from India. And that man was a real stupid man. So when he asked him to do something, he does something else. He cannot understand things properly. So one day, some of his friends in Tibet told him, why do you want to keep this man? Send him back. And this monk told him, no. Every time when he makes mistake, I take that opportunity to practice my patience. If I send him back, I miss that. See how great people take things and face problems. Any bad thing in this world, we can concentrate according to our understanding and can avoid the bad effects of this, or the reactions of the, this attitude, if you know how to concentrate. Think. So without grumbling, without creating further troubles and misunderstanding and enmity, we can overcome many of our problems. So when you read that book, Happy Married Life, uh, you get some advice. So blessing 
is important just to create some confidence at that time. Another thing, they also feel that in front of either the Buddha or God or the monks, and we have promised to marry so and so, so it is our duty not to break, not to violate our marriage life. On that, you have to create, implant this idea in their mind. And you conduct some sort of blessing service. Now that is the significance of conducting a religious service. You should not neglect, that is very important. Next one is birth. When the Buddha was born, his father, King Suddhodana, invited certain Brahmins, they are religious teachers in India, invited the palace. And you know the story. Having seen the special marks and characteristics, and they have predicted that some of them say this uh, baby can become a very powerful universal monarch, and only one person, uh, some others say, either a king or a religious leader. And one person say, no, he become only a religious teacher, he will never become a king. Uh, these are the religious teachers. They were invited to, to bless the time, but they are predicted according to their knowledge and understanding. So this tradition was there even before Buddhism came into existence. Today we conduct some sort of blessing service one month after giving birth, not earlier. And this belief is common I think in mostly in Asian countries that there are some sort of pantan and taboo, not pure. This is only a belief. People say we should not go to temple earlier. Some people say even after uh, there are funerals also they should not visit some other places. All these are pantam. And Buddhism never support this idea, only belief. And some others, some ladies, come and ask whether we can enter the shrine dome during certain period. There is no nothing in the Buddha's teaching. Traditional belief maintained by people. If they like to uphold this belief, there is no harm, they can uphold, but no restriction. They are not violating anything according to our religion. So Buddhism is a free religion. So birth is to welcome a new life. First thing we give confidence to the father and mother that this baby is protected. Now that is very important. I think you have heard this story. Two persons just like uh, ascetics uh, meditating together for some time. After that, one of them gave up his meditation and returned to a family life, got, got married. And when he had a baby, he wanted to go and see his friend, his teach, uh, not teach actually, friends, to get his blessing for this time. So when 
he went to see his friend, a meditator. Having seen this baby, he did not say that, May you live long. But he said to the father and mother, May you live long. So the father and mother could not understand. Then they asked, Why? Why you didn't say, May you live long to this baby? And then he said, According to my understanding, this child cannot live long. Very short. That's all. So they were very sad. Went to see the Buddha. The Buddha also did not say, May you live long to this child, but only to the father and mother. Now they were thinking what to do. Then asked his advice. Then the Buddha said, this child is influenced by certain evil forces. If these evil forces influence further and further, this child will last long, cannot live long. Then they ask, is there any, any solution to get rid of this? And then the Buddha said, right. He advised a group of monks to visit this house for one week. That is the beginning of all night chanting. First time. To go and do some blessings and chanting for one week. In the last day, the Buddha also visited and blessed the child. And that day, he said, May you live long, because evil influence are no more there. Ah, you can understand why blessing is important for a newborn baby. Now, the reason is, we experience certain influences due to planetary system and certain invisible living beings. We regard them as spirits and this and that, all sorts of names. They also influence our life. And various planets also influence our life. These are external. Beside these external disturbances, we also experience our own karmic effects and disturbances. Certain bad deeds that we have done during our previous birth, or one of our previous births, if that particular bad karma is a very strong one, it is impossible for anyone to change. But there are certain bad karmas which are not very strong, can be overcome through the influence of certain new fresh good karmas. Now this is the way how to overcome even our own karmic defects by doing more and more good karmas. But here, for one week, this father and mother attended to these monks and listening to the chanting and developed their devotion, confidence, and they have accumulated so much merits and the monks also did their chanting 
by cultivating their compassion towards this time. So the power of these virtues and the kindness and compassion of the monk and the power of the words they recited as chanting, the sound vibration also dispelled certain evil forces. And again, the power of the merits, the father and mother accrued for one week. All these forces have become very dynamic force to couple the external evil influence. Now then, when the Buddha said, may you live long, they ask, how long? Then he says, 120 years. Uh, now, because he had, according to his own karma, the maximum lifespan, 120 years. And all the other good karma supported him to live 120 years. Otherwise, halfway, that productive karma which condition or produce this life, may collapse. So we need some supportive karma. That is why it is necessary for us to do some meritorious deeds whenever chances are there. The example is given in Dhammapada by the Buddha. Uddha bindu nipatena uddha kumbho vipurati. The water is drop by drop into a pot. But after few hours or few days, you can see the big pot is completely full of water. So in the same manner, whenever there is a little bit of chance, don't think this is a very minor thing. Do some sort of good deeds. So every day you can go on accumulating, accumulating, accumulating. Later, all these karmic uh, forces that you have accumulated become very dynamic force to support your life, to maintain your way of life, your good health and various worldly things. Worldly karmas provide worldly support. So the blessing is very important, so don't forget it. Next one, sickness. Why is it necessary to do some blessings when somebody is sick? Now that is very important. So when we perform some religious service in front of this person, that person gets some hopes and confidence and can maintain some sort of peace in his mind. And he also believes by the virtues of this religious service, may I get the chance to get rid of my sickness or my problem. That confidence is very important. So when we talk to a sick person, although that person is very serious, we must never show him, indicate him, never tell him that he is serious, just like doctors. Doctors always say, Doctor, what do you think about my sickness? Ah, don't worry, it will be all right, that's all. But doctor knows he is very serious. That is their language. You, that confidence. If you say something for that person to create disappointment, that disappointment disturbs the mind. Then go on worrying and crying and creating all sort of the evil thoughts in his mind. Create more confusion in his mind. Then, 
especially at the last moment, when the person is going to die. If we can perform some sort of religious service, if that person is conscious, if he can see or can hear, this will become immediate karmic force which he implants in the mind and can remain up to the last moment because many other good karmas that he has performed earlier, he may experience some difficulties to recall. He will not mix up with so many other thoughts, other evil thoughts, other karmic thoughts. But the last rite which we perform can support this person they have a better rebirth. All the other things that we perform after they are dead is mostly rites and ritual for our satisfaction. Actually, departed person is not benefited with all these things. Just to show, they spend thousands and thousands of dollars to perform certain funeral rites. But departed persons are not benefited at all. So whatever you do as good deeds or the merits before his or her death become very useful support for him to develop more confidence and die peacefully. I remember a few years ago in Bansa, I was invited who so I'm blessed, old lady, a Chinese lady. So as soon as I entered into her room, and she paid respect and very cheerful, very serene old lady, with smiling face, she was watching, and doctors told them, the family members, at any moment, very, very uncertain, according to her heart condition. That is why they came and invited me. So I started to do some chanting and watching. So he keeping this up all the while. When I was reciting Rabbana Sutta in a half way, then I saw, finish. First time I have seen such a peaceful day. The hands are still like this. Can you imagine? And uh, there was a lady. She is a sister of a Catholic priest. After this, she came and told me, I am a Catholic. Uh, to me, actually, this is a miracle. I have never seen, I have seen so many persons passing away. First time that I have seen a person who passed away so peacefully. Because at that time, she was concentrating. Her mind is very pure, with devotion and confidence. Passed away peacefully while chanting was good. I have seen some other cases also like this. Earlier, religious people must visit sick people, go and talk to them to give more confidence. Don't talk about that person's sickness, how dangerous, how serious, and don't talk all these things. Give more confidence like this. It's not bluffing, but at that, this is some sort of uh, intellectual hypocrisy. <laughs> Just to console others, 
can say, yes, we have seen, but of course now you know the trick. The next time when you are sick, if I go and tell like this, you don't believe that. <laughs> Just like Dale Carnegie, Dale Carnegie's tricks, you know. <laughs> you have to tell them. We have seen so many others who suffer from this kind of sickness, but later I found out they could manage to overcome their problem, the cure. And why do you worry about this? Uh, you have to use this language. Then this gives a lot of confidence. Although this person is serious, although doctors say it is incurable, but you must give this confidence. That is very important. Don't talk about the seriousness of the sickness. Especially when religious people can do some blessings, give some confidence and console, they will be very happy. Of course, there are some people who never change their mind even up to the last moment. I went to see another lady who was very serious in PG. So after my blessing, she was fully conscious. And uh, my doctor said her heart condition was very, very uncertain. Then she, after my blessing, she called her husband and whispered something. And usually, when people think that they may die very soon, they offer something in the name of religion, either give a donation to, to become more happy. So she whispered to her husband, then I asked the husband, what did she say? She said, few days ago she bought social welfare, few lottery tickets, and asked me to find that whether she got any price or not. <laughs> she is dying here, but... <laughs> Can you imagine the mentality here? Huh? So we should not develop this kind of craving up to the last moment. This is a real foolishness actually, you know. So the blessing service is very important for sick people, for various purposes, especially for rebirth, to develop more confidence and hopes. Next one, <coughs> ah, funerals. Just now I told you, so many performances, rites and rituals we perform according to our traditions. In different countries they have different methods. But the Chinese have more because of their ancient uh, civilization, their culture, the accumulations of so many traditions and customs and beliefs so very rich, but some are very primitive. Primitive man's way of thinking, some of them. Therefore time has come for you to give up. For many others laugh at you. Please remember this. Other religions and poor Buddhism get the blame because of you. They say look at those Buddhists, what they do, how they waste money, how they burn all these things. Why can't they use these things to feed poor people who suffer, sick people? As you want to follow this type of Buddhism? Poison the minds of young people. Time has come for you to get rid of this thing. Again, certain valuable things that you dump into the coffin, clothing and jewelry and valuable thing, thinking that the departed person can get in the next world. Just you are sending by registered uh, post agent. Uh, after this, either burial or cremation, utter wastage. Why can't you donate all these things to poor people in the name of your departed one? And he, you also get the merits, and the departed person also get the merit. But in other countries they don't do this kind of thing. Yes, I told you, there are many things at a wastage. And the religious service is important for two purposes. First thing, for all their 
family members. At that time, they have a terrible fear in their mind. So many things are pantang to them at that time. Cannot do this, cannot eat this, cannot. So many restrictions because of fear. And those who have no such fear never follow these things. They go as usual. But they do their duty. When we perform some religious service in that house, and this religious service gives confidence. And they feel that they are protected. Either evil forces or devils or ghosts or these departed persons cannot disturb now. They are saved. That is the psychological effect. If there is no such religious service, they feel we are in danger. The evil spirit may come and attack us, or the departed person may come and disturb us. So if we perform this kind of religious service, we are safe. That is very important. Without performing some sort of religious service, it is very difficult for people to get rid of this fear. Another reason, they are in a very bad situation. Sadness, worries, uncertainties, there are grievances, lamenting, worrying and crying. Therefore they need some support, external support at that time to wipe out their worries and grievances and fear. So the religious service gives this confidence and strengthen their mind, come back to their normal way of thinking, to understand things, and then give some quotations uttered by the Buddha. Just now I mentioned about sickness, and the advice given by the Buddha are very meaningful. When you visit some sick people, you can give this saying. Don't say people say like this. Say Buddha says like this. So what did he say? Very old couple, husband and wife, who lived oh, more than 50 to 60 years, who lived a very peaceful married life, never had any problem. When they were very old, one day they visited the Buddha. Then the Buddha asked, how are you? They said, we are very happy, we are very peaceful, we never had any trouble, any problem. Only things where we are very weak, we are suffering from some sicknesses, that's all. Now then, the advice given by the Buddha. You must remember, when you are sick, don't allow your mind also to be sick. Because mind never gets sickness. Mind is always fresh. But we pollute the mind by worrying, and developing anger, jealousy, or evil forces, uh, then the mind also becomes sick. Otherwise, like physical body, the mind never becomes sick. And mind never dies. That is why people say life never dies. Your yeah, life means that mental energy never dies. This physical body is a house for that life to live, to take shelter. So the life cannot die. This physical body decay, 
collapse and disintegrate, dissolve and disappear. Dead then go. We say dead then go. But that person never dies. Rupam jirati machanam nama guttam na jirati. This is another important saying of the Buddha. Rupam jirati. Rupa means physical body. Jirati decay. Physical body decay and die and disappear. Nama guttam na jirati. Nama never decay. Nama means here, there are two meanings here. One meaning is mind. Another meaning is influence created by us while we are living, never die. Now we are using the names of certain people today who lived few thousand years ago. Just now I mentioned about the Buddha and Socrates. Let us say Jesus Christ or Mohammed or Krishna. They are living to us. What they have done, influence created by them, never die. And those who have created bad influence also never die. Devadatta who lived in the Buddha's time, every time we mention his name, he also never die. The bad influence created by him. And Hitler in Germany, all over the world people talk about him. Uh, he also never died because of the atrocities and disaster and massacring innocent people, what he has done. That is called influence. Uh, here the Buddha says, man's physical body decay and die and disappear, but his mind, mental energy and the influence created by them never die. So don't worry, you never die. You understand? It is a very good day for us to talk. New Year Day. So you remember, you never die. This, this house that you are keep, occupied, die, decay. But remember, you have occupied this house without paying house rent. <laughs> So you are not allowed to occupy this free of charge. But you do not know every minute you are paying the house rent. In terms of your ache and pains and worries and suffering, you are paying the house rent. Not in terms of dollars. So when the troubles and problems and sicknesses come, I think, oh, this is the way how I pay my house rent. Don't come. Don't blame God and go stand in the devil. If you want to occupy this house, you have to pay the price. But you never die. When this house is decay and collapse, you run away and enter into another house. Ah, that is called rebirth. So, Remember these two advices given by the Buddha. When you are sick, don't worry about your sickness. When I had a very serious heart attack, three, four doctors say no hope at all. And a slickly prohibited to talk, cannot talk. But I can talk. I had full confidence, although doctors have given up hope, I had full confidence. <coughs> When I was talking, doctors come and tell me, we ask you not to talk. Then I say, doctor, if I can talk, what harm is there? I can talk. Ah, the confidence. I had that confidence. Don't give up confidence. Don't go on thinking I may die, what to, what to do, Matila. <laughs> <laughs> then your sickness also aggravates. Their mind is dynamic, energetic, strong. This strong mental energy maintain more vibration to 
neglected of certain physical problem. Remember that. When you are sick, don't allow your mind. Be cheerful. Maintain cheerfulness when you are sick. Don't show your sour face when you are sick. The other thing is, life never dies. Only physical body dies. Life means mental energy. As long as we maintain certain ingredients in our mind, that mind never dies. So we never die. So we can give all these confidence to get rid of their worries and miseries and many other things by conducting this religious service during a funeral journey. On the other hand, if that departed person needs some support, but not all, some had more than enough. They don't depend on our merits. Some are very unfortunate. They are not in a position to receive anything. Remember these two groups. Those who were born as Devas and Brahmas and human beings, they had their enough good karma to carry on their way of life, to be born as such fortunate living being. Some others who were born as animals and certain ghosts and spirits, not all, certain, are unfortunate because they cannot receive the merits. So in between there are certain other living beings in a spirit forms. Uh, they are the ones who are waiting to receive the merit and the support. That is why we perform our duties. If they need, they will be benefited. If not, we have not wasted anything. We are benefited because we have done some good deeds. But simply by burning all those things, you waste your money, no one is benefited. Only those who do business will be benefited, can make more money. 